trying to review some of those licks for a second for you? Yeah, do the major one, minor one you just did, if you can remember it. That's always, uh, I was thinking yeah. like I wouldn't do it, but. Um, so like with uh, with blues guys, like Angus Young, or and that's blues rock, but like Clapton, B.B. King, you name it, all those old school cats, they all, in my opinion, had to have been thinking major, minor, pentatonic, back and forth, like blues, call and response. This stuff works extremely well over seventh chords, blues style music, rock, power chords, because you can get away with a lot. Um, so when I'm playing, I'm taking a shape and we just said A minor. So you could look at it in the cage if you're familiar or if that's what you want, you don't have to. You could just say, okay, pattern one. And I'm doing a call, minor pentatonic lick. And then a response, major pentatonic. Okay, and then maybe I'll go down in the shape and add some other notes. So I'll go like, and then now major or something. And then, okay, now let me move up to the next box. So minor. And then finish it with major. Or whatever. Okay, now I'm in the next box. And then major. Next box, minor. Okay, and then I'll go major. So whatever the hell. And then minor, next box, which we, we did over here. So and then major. Right, and then once you get really good with that, the back and forth, and be strict about it, you know, minor, just major. Once you get good at that, then you can combine them in the same phrase. And then it gets real buttery. So I bent to the major third, and then back down, now to the minor. And that's giving me, right, you got to do, you got to do it every now and then. <laughs> so that, but those are the licks, man. That's how I'm viewing a lot of soloing. I'm literally just kind of going through and major, minor, wherever. Oh. And you can hear it too. You can hear where it's happening if you listen oh, yeah. closely, you know? Yeah. As far as the chords underneath, would, would it work over a minor progression and minor blues or would it have to be a major seventh kind of blues? Dominant. Right. Or not major seventh, dominant. Yeah. Right, that, that's what I was saying. Is it, It's more of like a, it, I think it's more tailored to a seventh chord. Seven, nine, 13, any extension of that work. But it works, and it, but it, but it does work from time to time. It just depends on who's playing what behind you. Like, if somebody's playing a minor seven chord or minor, you know, playing that major third over that isn't going to work very well. You know, like, uh, you know what I mean? So that's going to limit. It won't work. No, it, it's not going to sound as good. But if you when you go to the no it's still okay never mind it can i have i have a looper here if you want to i can demonstrate and show you if you no, want okay. um, no. but but more so in rock in rock you can do it constantly because everything's a power chord in rock you know right. like yeah it really is i mean no matter what anybody's really playing <laughs> whatever the hell the rhythm is, that's all just A, so you can get away with it. Those are those three strings. Okay. 
So right there, I did minor up and then I did major Hendrix style down. So it, it, all that would have worked over, you know. <laughs> whatever the hell the rhythm is you know what i mean yeah that's cool even over even over that mate like this is because you're definitely you're hitting that note even though you think it's still uh it'll still work right it'll still work 100 percent, dude there's and there's no it's not like I'm playing a full chord with it. If I was playing like um um I mean even so like uh I mean maybe then you'd have more trickiness with the major third and some of that stuff, but when it's single notes in between, that's fine, dude. That's like all of ACDC, that's all of classic rock in general zeppelin you know that's like the vibe that they're doing even when it's more based around you know a major or pentatonic scale individual notes you could still get away with it dude listen to the angus young stuff man he's doing it constantly yeah that's true yeah very true like in hey, for, uh, um, or go ahead for the alternate picking thing i remember one of your things was you had this <laughs> that so that's yeah. all uh, uh any any advice on like how to get from this string and you know what i want to ask how do you practice that what, what is your practice schedule like as far as how much time would you spend on that uh to get something like that down before you each day before you said okay that's enough time on that move on like, how do you practice I think you, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, not, not long. I mean, I used to practice a lot of, a lot of time. It'd be maybe like a few hours on licks and shit like that. But I just think that's beating a dead horse. Maybe like, well, if you're talking about one lick, I mean, 10, 15 minutes probably, but good focused practice. Remember putting on the metronome and saying, oh, okay. Now I'm being diligent about this. My I'm, you're working on your rhythm. It's more about how you practice as opposed to how long I think. So obviously, if you can go 30 minutes, you know, and you have the time, yeah, you're gonna make gains. But practice with a click, know your rhythms, maybe count them out loud, have the good technique, and that's gonna be the best way you can do it. As far as that lick, though, I'm not sure which one you're talking about that I did, uh, but that's all common shit so you, let's say d minor right uh, right so i'm thinking more like uh 16th note triplets right one to the 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 one so that's what I'm going to be, that's what I would be counting to the metronome. So if I tap tempo that one of the 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 one of and I'm gonna work on that to get that tight. Okay. And I noticed too, you're, you, um, you're, you're. I noticed you use a lot of the the arm. Do I? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of just. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it's too much arm as more so as it is like wrist, like right here. It's probably like 
I mean, I guess I don't really think too much about it, but it's definitely not elbow or like full, you know, full arm. Um, when I do play a little bit faster, though, I do find it harder. And Paul Gilbert does the same thing. Is like he will let a little bit of, of it out because it gives you a little more space to move quicker. It's hard to just cuff and like. See, I can't even really. It's hard to do at that speed. So if you let it out a little bit. Right? It's been a while since I've done some of these, but. Are you moving quick though? It can be, it'll still sound tight, but it'll be, you know. Yeah. I noticed like like when I'm doing like the Eddie Van Halen thing, the only way to really get that is, uh, is you gotta turn in like that. Oh you have to, yeah. When you when you're doing oh. tremolo, tremolo is yeah, there's no other way to get, and that's how he does it, right? He used to do like a, like that. He would have it. It's so much easier. It's like, well, this is oh, harder. Yeah. I have to tighten my whole arm. He no, do his yeah. thing. He was just like, it's like, oh, that's easy, man. Right, that's when right. I realized, so, like, all these styles, oh. it's it's okay to like, yeah, when you're playing faster stuff, you change your hand position, the whole thing. Totally. Stuff comes over. You know, your thumb's all the way over here. Like, why is your thumb over here? Much you know? better, yeah, when your thumb, yeah. So another thing, too, to think about, too, with this cuffing, though, I do it pretty much for all my playing, even on, like, rhythms, like I showed you before on the, even if it's, like, you know, right? Or if it's, like, uh, it could be anything, a riff. It's just so much tighter. Um, and then even like you said something about arpeggios earlier, I'll still use that for the same thing, man. I'm like it doesn't have to be fast, but it's so much tighter if you listen to that. I mean, I usually do it like But I see how that like I'm just not used to playing like that but I can see yeah. how it can so I gotta get used to like that whole it's tough dude yeah I, I don't and I don't really do a lot of that as much anymore but my point is is I'm just like if any videos you see of me or whatever you know I'm always playing more like this now <clears throat> it's so much tighter I have more control it makes it easier on my hybrid picking too like whenever I want to add in which, and I'm a big hybrid picker, as you know. But even on like just riffs, man, like, you know. Like that's why I think Van Halen sounded so tight too, is because he had, he did hold the pick here, but it's the same thing, he cuffed in. If I play that same riff out. It didn't sound bad, but now listen to this. Do you yeah, hear think, a difference? Yeah, you get more snap. Yeah. That's what like uh, Phil X does that a lot too. I, like I said, that one song he was doing, I think it was Fire. Uh, he does his Hendrix Fire song. In there, right. he's like, I'm like, you can't do that like this. No. You can't just can't, you can't get that that snap. Like, most people don't even. Care. 
catch that. Like they just go. <laughs> they don't even catch no. it. No. Yeah. No. yeah everybody. <laughs> Yeah, and it comes in on an and too. So it's like one and two and three and four. Yeah. It's an and. Yeah. yeah, it's an and. It's not even a downbeat. But on the record, it sounds like he's starting on a down because that's where they started. He they started the track. But I'm pretty sure it's on an and because it falls perfectly. If you count it, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and boom, yeah. one, and two, and three, falls perfectly. I got yelled at at a couple gigs for playing it on the downbeat. That's how I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I got, yeah, it was pretty bad. The drummer so, yelled at you, right? <laughs> every, yeah, I've been yelled at before, what? so. <clears throat> You're talking about the, the, the scratchy part? No, no. no. Start know where you're starting because if you start like this, this is like one, two, three, four. That's not right. That's what the record sounds like, but it's actually on the and. So it's one and two and three and four. See how it falls perfectly right there? I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah, but there's still the, down, the downbeat still. This downbeat's still in the one, right? Boom, ba da, boom, ba. Ba da, boom, ba. Oh, you mean the way the way it actually starts? Boom, ba da, boom, ba. That's right. Ba da, boom, ba. That's right. Ba da, boom, ba. Ba da, ba. Yeah, that, like the little scratchy part, right? Uh, comes in early, which is cool. Like. I've been trying to do that more with my playing, like think coming in on the the E's and the U's, like I think I mentioned earlier, you know, coming in. When you're picking too, like let's say you're alternate picking, do you do you have notes like thinking, okay, I'm gonna come in on the upbeat, so I'm gonna come in with an up start my alternate picking on an upswing so that I stay consistent with the temp, with the rhythm. You know what I mean? Or is that uh or is that a uh a, a, another thought? You gotta be more specific about that. <clears throat> like, say you're like playing, like. Oh. So I'm, I'm starting by picking, even though I'm staying consistent with it. I'm coming in on a. That kind of thing. Like, so you come in on the up. Like, you, it just makes yeah. sense, right? That, that does kind of make sense, yeah. I think more so that you should consider the sound of it because an upstroke has a different sound than a downstroke. Like if you play like a, like, I started with the down. There's a punctuality to the upstroke, like uh, those were upstrokes. But if I go like down, that sounds good, but now here's up again. Yeah. Right, you, there's a difference between yeah. those two, you know? Yeah. I think Kinda it's like more drummer. about the sound. Drummer doesn't really have, drummer doesn't have an upswing. He just has, he's got a hit. Right. So it's just about how he wants it to sound. Hey, right. uh, talking about Van Halen riffs. There's one Van Halen riff, you know, the, uh, I know you know this one, so I'm gonna. <laughs> You know that riff? When you play that, are you doing that all alternate dance, starting with the down pick? Like. Like, how do you play that riff? You, or you, cause I, I, play that I can't get it fast enough. I can't get it yeah. fast enough when I'm trying. I haven't played that one in I a have while. to cheat it. That's it, so, but it's swung. I gotta go back and I don't remember the soul. Um, so those are down, down, up, down, up. Oh, it's down, up, down, up. 
Yeah. So it's um. I know why, because you're picking everything. There's a pull off in there. Right here. That's a pull off. There's no bend though, like. Er, there it is, yeah. Right. Yeah. Isn't that right? I got to so, go back so, to remember. Yeah. No, that sounds right, but uh, like you said, because because it, like you said, the swing part of it should be. But I can't do it with like starting this in a downbeat. Well, you're picking everything, though. You, the last note is a pull off. You're picking everything. You can hear. I can hear the difference. Let, let's go through it slow then. So we got uh, down. That's a half step right there. And that bend is a half step to the blue notes. Try it again. Right? Yeah, even. That's it. Now, see, you're picking that last note. It's a pull off. So this one, that's a pull up. That's a pull up. <laughs> okay, so that, that allows you to get back in time to do that. Okay, right. that makes sense. I, I would have had to cheat it and I started going, just reversing it, but but it's harder to stay in time because you like gotta really focus on the time. <laughs> Okay, I see. I'm doing it right now. Yeah. And it's also so, the rhythm. Wait. I mean, I could always cheat. I, I mean, okay, that's cool. So I'll try that. <laughs> it's so fancy. But, but it's got a swing too. That's the whole thing. Like you're not playing it. Swing. You got to play it as a triplet. That's why. When do they? When do they? When do they? When do they? When do they want to count it? <laughs> You got to swing with it, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, it's got to uh, swing, man. I don't remember these fucking licks, though, so. Major to minor. Yeah. That, that yeah, yeah, you're right. Major, that whole solo is major to minor, except for that big fucking intro lick that he does. It's just a superhuman lick, but the rest... It's all major to minor <laughs> pentatonic. And then that's good, you're right. Right? And then yeah. this big I don't even remember it, dude, but that's the idea of it is major to minor. But 